The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said it is, but others said, no, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, how were your eyes opened? He replied, the man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed, and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, is this your son, who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, he is of age, question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, if he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, you are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God speaks to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, this is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshiped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, 
so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not all so blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying we see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And isn't that wonderful? Because we all love the light. Don't we? Growing up in Baltimore, part of our basement was unfinished, a kind of dirt floor. And in the hot, humid summers of Baltimore, we had water bugs, ooh, water bugs. These round, flat beetle things, and you'd flick on the light and doo -doo 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 -doo. they'd all race to find a crevice, a corner, a crack to go back and hide in. It was kind of spooky. My sister didn't like it. She'd turn on the light and wait a couple moments for them to find their way doo -doo 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 back into the crevices. My dad's solution was an old bug killer. Oh, you young folks don't remember it. All the bug killers now are fragrant with lemon and vanilla. This one was called Flit. Wow. It not only killed all the bugs, it knocked out half the neighborhood. And those water bugs did not like the light. And there's a water bug in you and in me. And when the light of Jesus Christ shines upon us, we don't like it. That light is piercing. It's cutting. It exposes and reveals. And like those water bugs, we scamper away looking to hide again in the darkness. The first chapter of John's Gospel famously says, the light came into the world, but the world preferred darkness. It hurts too much. It knocks us off a peg. It damages our pride. And yet Lent is the great season of the light of Christ shining into our souls. And in a particular way, this is the season to go to confession. The church, in fact, says that every Catholic must go to confession at least once a year. And the best time to do that is just before Easter. The old-fashioned name for it is, it's your Easter duty. And the reason for that, of course, is that Easter, that great feast of joy, of redemption, of salvation, it can all become just a lot of silly, stupid, sentimental nonsense, unless God has touched our hearts with his mercy and forgiveness God has given us his grace so that the joy of the resurrection is not phony, buried under peeps and candy and all the rest of it, but it's real. The light of Christ is meant to shine on us this Easter. Go to confession. Here, elsewhere, there are 10 parishes within 10 minutes. And in a particular way, I wish to say to our young people, our teenagers, our children, God wants to shine in you 
You, yes, you, not just your grandmother, you go to confession. If anyone should get this, it's the people of Transfiguration Parish, our very symbol, our very name, Christ, the light of the world shining upon us. And for you young people, you have friends, people you know, who need the light of Jesus Christ. Their souls are dying. We live in a world of darkness. And you, yes, you, are meant to shine with the light of Christ. You, to every one of us, to all of our young people here, our young people who are 65 years old and 75 and older, Go to confession. Yes, it's not always fun. It's not always easy. That light that shines upon us can be scary, but we remember it's the light of Jesus Christ who is full of mercy, full of forgiveness. This Lent, don't be a water bug scurrying and hiding you can't hide from God. He says to us, I see you've got a room up there in your soul with the door closed. What's up there in that room? And we say, uh, nothing, nothing, nothing. God knows what's up in that room. God knows what's in the dark crevices. God knows everything, and he loves you. And he wishes to shine his light upon you, and not just for your sake. Mom and Dad, God wants you to shine with the light of Jesus Christ for your children. People in sickness, you can shine like nobody else because they will see that the light is not yours. It's not mere emotion. You're suffering, and yet you shine. To every one of us this Lent, go to confession. Get real. Get honest. Get your into the confessional. The light of Jesus Christ is coming upon you. He wants you to shine.